So this video on how to make protein, I did this towards the tail end of summer. It was a, like a 100 degree day. Uh, now it's January, first week of January. Totally different circumstances what we got going on now. But essentially the cows still need the protein. They need it now more than they did tail end of summer. Summer, I was fighting a drought. Now it's just, everything's dead. So the cows need the protein in their belly to help them digest a lot of those undervalued feeds. And like my cows right now, they're out on Prozo stubble, which is essentially, I don't know, it'd be basically kind of like having your cows out on corn stalks. But that's where they are right now and they need a little extra oomph of energy, especially now because the temperatures are getting down there. We're having, we're having 20, 30 below zero nights. So they definitely need the energy as well as a little protein. They're getting energy out there in the Prozo stubble. There's a lot of Prozo seeds, so I know they're getting plenty of that. I check their manure about every day but they do need some protein to help them digest that lower value fiber or cellulistic materials. So this is what I've, I've been doing. I've, I'm gonna change up my ration a little bit for this winter. It, it's still gonna be providing about 20 to 30% protein and it's still gonna have a high energy content. But yeah, so this is what I did and this is what I've been doing. I'm gonna try to put some distillers in the next round, but check this one out, it's super easy. These tubs are costing about eleven to twelve hundred dollars a ton, and this mixture that I'm doing it's running about thirty dollars a ton. So significant savings, and the cows are still getting just as much energy, just as much protein, salt, mineral, everything they need. But it's saving me, saving me a thousand dollars a ton essentially, which is awesome. But it does cost a little bit of elbow grease and work. There's equipment out there that can make this process a thousand times easier. But hey, it's just what I do because you know form fit <laughs> so yeah i uh, hope you enjoy this video this is how i make my protein and let's do it let's go so for a while i've been saying how i make my own protein and stuff and i figured i'd show you guys what, what i've been up to but uh it's pretty pretty simple this is the poor man's protein plant right here <laughs> i've got uh some different types of grain in these super sacks back here some oh just uh screenings from cleaning grain some damaged wheat and then uh Oh, some old, uh, it look, basically looks like compost. This stuff here is just uh, spent soybean holes that are off of, I think of a, a roaster. Um, anyways, it was just, just a bunch of junk. But uh, some, some of this here is really, really high in protein. Other spots are higher in energy. If you look here, this is just prozo screenings. Like I said, some damaged wheat here. That we rolled that stuff just to help it out a little bit and then some salt salt mineral and some lick 30 just some some liquid protein liquid protein is what i did last winter all winter long and it worked pretty good but this way i can just add a lot of energy use way less of that stuff and just lower my price of protein down sig significant significantly <laughs> So anyways, I don't know, that's how we do it. We just throw it in there and mix it up. A little bit of time. It takes about... I'll have to do this three different times to fill a protein tub up. That was the protein. Here's some wheat screenings. These have been cracked and rolled. That's pretty good stuff there. Although the price of wheat now is what six seven bucks so who knows how much longer that'll that'll be available but it's okay if it's no longer available you can switch to something else like here's some here's some prozo screenings just just junk stuff that's got high energy levels in it not as high as corn by any means but it has an energy level nonetheless and then finally last but not least some salt and mineral mix depending on the time of year you can up this stuff lower it down if they're eating too much up your salt content if they're not eating enough lower it down and all these I try to keep the ration about the same I finally figured out kind of what works for the cattle what they really like to eat so I don't know I've just been leaving it about the same they're doing really good out there and then just give her a good old mix, mix a roux. I like to mix all the dry stuff up first. 
pretty good and then I'll add the liquid stuff in. Clearly I got her a little too full. This stuff here is just mix 30 liquid protein. It comes off of uh, sugar plants. It's a byproduct from uh, this stuff here is just a byproduct of uh, corn syrup manufacturing. You guys love it. It's pretty high in protein. This stuff has some added minerals to it too. I just get it from the local co-op town. But it is pretty runny. See, look how runny that is now in there. I, don't, I think you can see. Give her a couple good mixes and it blends right in there pretty quick. Cranking protein. Protein, yeah. If I was gonna buy these protein tubs, like the, I think that's the Crystal Licks. They're good tubs, really good tubs. I've got along with Crystal Licks for a long time, but it's just got really, really, really expensive. I think, actually, no, they're over 100 bucks a tub now. So I think they're like 130, 140 a tub. So this stuff here, it all adds up. It's about, yeah, the, the mix 30 is the expensive stuff, but by the time I get that in the tub, granted, putting a lot of labor into it, but it's only costing me close to 30 bucks a ton, which is pretty cool. And I'm sure you could get it cheaper, cheap down. And I'm sure you could get do it less than that if you could find your stuff for free. Which a lot of places just give all that junk grain away. Or if you could go to, what I'd really like to do this with is some distiller's grains. Over the winter. Oh, that's probably good enough. She looks nice and mixed up and pretty liquidy in there. Well, yeah, let's dump it in there. Stage one, complete. Stage two. Just like that. Got your salt, mineral, junk, junk energy, and protein. And really, once you're inside, inside the gut of a cow, those bacteria, the microbe, microbiome inside of a cow's gut it doesn't care where the protein comes from or what kind of protein it is just as long as it's good protein you see that so you can see some wheat some prozo and here's this right here here's a bunch of those soybeans that got over roasted or whatever that is junk seed I don't know and this is screening, so there are a lot of weed seeds in here too. So if you're worried about weed seeds, I don't know if I'd get too carried away. Or just pay attention to what you're putting in there. But So that's the first part. It kind of sticks together. But now the second part. Man, this tub is so hot you can hardly hold on to it. The reason I put it into one tub is because by the time you get these all full, they're a little heavy. They're like really heavy actually. So this is about the only way I can handle them without a tractor or something. And here's the secret to making this stuff kind of last a little longer. Just get a little stomp down. Pack's pretty good. The more you can pack them, it seems like the better they last or they won't eat them quite as fast. That's part of the secret, I think, is the packing. I just use salt content levels to speed them up or slow them down. And then I'm talking about the cows consuming the protein. Then, so this here is my super handy dandy bucket lifting mechanism. All it is is a vice grip with a just a hook on it, just a hook screwed in through the back side, just a little chain hook. Works pretty slick. And the reason I'm doing this is not only so I don't have to pick them up on the back of the pickup, but I also like to try to get a weight on these things just to try to monitor what the cattle are eating and I got a little scale here next one of the next things I like to do is just uh, see what these weight or these uh, tubs are weighing and then I write it down so I know how much the calves are actually consuming <laughs> This tub here is about 180 pounds. I'll note that in the field where that's going and the days that that tub's out there with the X amount of cows or head on it. And that kind of gives me an idea of consumption rates. 
and uh, it depends on the time of year you want to vary that a little more protein a little less protein and sometimes I don't even have it out there for them but uh, cattle will typically with this type of protein will eat what they need because it doesn't really taste that great so they're just getting it for really what they need and I don't know just good to know too I guess right well let's uh, try to load this thing up without breaking anything That way, I didn't have to pick up 180 some pounds, almost 190 pounds of stuff. It's all about working smarter, not harder, right? Okay, well, I think we're pretty much ready to go. I'll let these ride around on the back of the pickup. I like to let this stuff set about a day. Um, I am out of protein in the fields right now, so I'm thinking I might just run them up there. They'll hit them hard either way. But yeah, so. I guess uh, let's go take these up to the cows and see how they like them. Well, I think they like it. <laughs> 